Yeah, those the well, that's just everybody on the first take. Okay, that, okay, let's play the second tape. <laughs> yeah. Well, as many of you know, we've been doing some behind the scenes stuff here at the studio, and today I'm really excited to have the one and only Pat Peterson here, and we thought we'd share a little bit of her story with you. She's here singing the background vocals on Sacrament, that new single we're going to release, and she's also the one that did the powerhouse vocals on the words of a song that many of you know from the video. So here we are today, and. Here's Pat. Well, I can't believe that I'm back uh, doing another tune with you. It's so much fun. I was just so, just overwhelmed. You called me up and said, hey, Pat, I've got this tune. Can you get there tomorrow? I said, uh, yes. All right. <laughs> I well, love your sure music, Eric. You are we incredible. You're incredible. And we met through a mutual friend, James Bland, another oh, great guy yeah, that I know we so both awesome. love. And he's, he's a very special person. And that's awesome. I love him. So, I wanted to ask you, so did you get your start with your, was it your grandmother that was a real big influence on you, taught you theory, or who was it that taught well, you? Well, actually, I have an Aunt Jewel. Oh, an aunt. An aunt, and she, uh, she lives in D.C. right now, and she's 90, she'll be 92 next, on the 8th of December. Wow. Still playing for the church. But she was really an inspiration to me because she taught me a lot of theory, and, and uh, I got a chance to just listen to her a lot. And that's where I got my start. My dad had other aunts, I mean, other sisters also. They played, but Aunt Jewel was full force, and she could play anything, read music, and and plus she was just, she was just incredible. Wow. I was really influenced by her. But to tell the truth, you know, I was influenced by the other aunts too. Each aunt, he had eight sisters. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> they all played a little something. But I had one uncle, his name was Uncle Leroy. He played like juke joint piano, uh -huh. and it was uh, that's how I really wanted to play piano because he would really get into the groove with whatever he was playing. He mostly just played instrumentals, but he could really jam. I loved mm -hmm. Uncle Leroy, so that's influenced awesome. by the family and of course church. So that was your first big. That was my first the Dark Side of the Moon tour with Pink Floyd and. I was just lost. I, I could sing the parts that, that they told me to, but I was just overwhelmed with the grandeur, all of the equipment. I'd never seen that much equipment, equipment before in my life, and so all the time that I was there, which was about a month, about, a month, about six weeks, I was just walking around with my head in the air. Wow. Mm -hmm. All this stuff, I was amazed. And then at that time, I didn't know that they were one of the biggest rock groups in the world right so that was exciting and when i got home i did my homework <laughs> I said, oh, oh my goodness i just finished up a tour with pink floyd so it was so much fun it was so i, yeah, was I think that record dark side of the moon was on the charts for like two, i think it's still on for the charts years yeah, for like 20 years, years, or something. years oh man i tell you being on stage with all that music and the sound coming from computers and everybody in this like mode it was breathtaking mm -hmm. i loved it it was so beautiful wow really it was a wonderful experience and uh i had a chance to do that with some with some singers out of the church uh, that they they used out of dallas wow mm -hmm. so that's how they found you that's how they found me uh, there were three of them and one of the girls got in some get, got into some trouble and they said oh who are we going to get to do this and then I had a friend that knew them and said, look, you need to get her. She can do it. And boy, did I do it. <laughs> I had That's a ball. Awesome. I had a ball uh, just all over the U.S. And uh, it was just beautiful. I loved it. So that was my first experience. I said, oh, well, maybe I, maybe I could do some of this again. But until then, you know, I played in local bands in, in Dallas and, and so on. And then how did the Ray Charles connection develop? Well, after playing in all those local bands in Dallas, I'm a little tired. So a friend of mine said, well, why don't you come to California? Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm putting together a thing, and um, I think that maybe you'll put, uh, fit really well. Just through some friends, you know, it's just like I'm getting a chance to, to record with you through a friend, you know. Oh, I love this mouth to mouth. So anyway, I went to California and um, worked in a band out there. The guy had a, a deal with Motown and we would do some things. Um, but that kind of went a little flat. And then I had the got the audition through another friend to do uh, Ray Charles. And 
there it was. Wow. Yeah, that, that was that was incredible because I was trying to prepare. I said, oh, I've got an audition with Ray Charles. Oh, yippee. I'm going to rehearse and my voice is going to be open. And as soon as I get in, when Ray uh, makes his entrance, and I'm singing there just so eager. <laughs> so he, he says, sing this note. And he hits one note. And I, of course, hit it. He said, mm-hmm. <laughs> and there I'm floored because I'm thinking I was going to have to, you know, really go for it. But as it turns out, it seems that Ray, any girl that actually had a chance to audition for him or wanted an opportunity that got to that point, he would give them the opportunity to do it. The, the trick to that was being able to hang. And so I, I hung in there for a couple of years and I said, well, time to go. <laughs> yeah. But it was so much fun. I had a ball there. I had a ball with Ray Charles because it's like singing for your childhood idol. Right. You know, that, it's an incredible feeling. And it's like, wow. Oh, I loved it. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. And then you worked with Tom Petty also? Wow, yes. Well, that happened. I had been performing with John Mellencamp. And in the 80s, John was so hot, you know, with the Jack and Diane and mm -hmm. hurt so good and all that stuff. So he, um, uh, Tom Petty would, would see, John, you know, would come to concerts sometimes. You know, they interchange that thing. And I think that they all kind of had a little... Of a camaraderie going because of um, Bob Dylan and Tom Petty and John Mellencamp and stuff. So they would interact. So Tom saw me and another lady uh, singing. He said, well, I want those girls. Mm -hmm. And he got us, too. There you uh, go. Yeah, I, that was oh, a fun tour. Uh, uh, pack up the plantation tour. And it was kind of odd because he had a lot of the union uh, garb that goes with the uh, plantations and the southern flag and stuff like that so i i wore one of the nice southern flags on my head and uh, it was just fun i did thomas tom was such a calm and calming type person to work for i loved it it was great yeah i remember being in junior high school and my first girlfriend had that john cougar mellencamp album we call it back then Ooh, john it's called john Co cougar well i think he went by john cougar back yeah john then. cougar yeah um, that, I was in junior high. Oh, that was before I met him. Yeah. I met him when he uh, had the American Fool mm -hmm. record with Jack and Diane and and Hurt So Good, those tunes, which wow. were really hot for him. And I saw, I first saw him on TV. A friend of mine, another friend, who I met in California when I was uh, out there doing the Ray Charles thing, said, well, look, I, I, know, I met this guy in Florida. His name is John Cougar. And I can't go on the road with him. I recorded, so you might want to check him out. And that time, I was at that time I was living in New York, and uh, I saw him on uh, Saturday Night Live, and uh, he was moving around. I said, "This is this could be fun because yeah. I love to dance, and his dancing is what really kind of got me going because he he'd move in and out of the beats, but still with." Cool rhythm, and I like that. Yeah, I yeah like he's that got, he's definitely got that. Mm -hmm. Wow, so California, New York, and now Dallas. Back home, there's yeah. no place like home. Yeah, <laughs> I've I've always considered Dallas the Dallas area home, because uh, growing up as a little girl in Smithville, Texas, I used to listen to Dinah Shore sing, "I'm from Big D, <laughs> my oh yes, <laughs> Big D, little a double a, you know." Like, uh, so. I just wanted to go to Dallas, you know, and I did. I, I came to Dallas after high school and went to junior college. And so Dallas is like home. And so is Smithville, of course. That's right. Mm. Right by Austin. That's amazing. And yeah, Dallas is only three hour flight from just about anywhere. So it's a great base. It's so for you, cool. Sure, uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. I love that. And I just get in, get on, the, get in a car and, you know, go to the airport and you're, you're done. So I, I like this location. Well, thanks for doing such a wonderful job on Words of a Song. Everybody Ooh. loves that, and thank you for this. And we look forward to getting it out there. And the one and only Pat Peterson. Thank you, Eric. Thank, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I talk too much. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry I have a big mouth. <laughs>